My name is Owe Wang. I am the CTO and co-founder of PowBio. I graduated from UC Berkeley with my PhD in environmental microbiology. Uh, I studied extremophiles, so bacteria that lived in extreme conditions, crazy acidity, crazy salinity, crazy pH, etc. I think there is um, a major need for innovation in the bio, uh, bioreactor space. So the bioreactor itself, the hardware, the country itself, honestly didn't really change in the past 50 years. And it is really um, a great time to combine the power of AI and the machine learning so that the bioreactors can deliver the data and the, um, the information that is required to optimize a um, synthetic biology fermentation process. Right now, the biggest challenge that we have solved is the cost of good the, and the problem with um, manufacturing capacity. I think we are at a critical time point that synthetic biology as our industry as a whole really need to start addressing these problems so that the technology actually delivers the promise and delivers the business instead of just a sophisticated technology. Hey everyone, so great interview coming up from the startup Pile Bio, and they're working to change how bioreactors actually work. And as we saw in the last video, Good Meat stopped building their facility where they were going to have 10 250,000 liter bioreactors to make cultivated chicken. The funding environment, I think, is going to turn out to be a good thing and that it's going to prevent a lot of wasted money going into projects which aren't actually feasible. So instead of spending half a billion dollars building 10 250 liter 250,000 liter bioreactors to make probably not a lot of chicken, we need to look at how do we rebuild bioreactors so they're efficient and so they actually work for cultivated meat in the first place. Same would go for precision fermentation. How do we build better bioreactors so that we can actually ferment the products that we need? So as part of my PhD, I leveraged uh, the fundamental knowledge of these extremophiles to solve for applied problems. And one of the core problems that we attacked on was the microbial contamination problem in bioreactors. So that later became our very first core IP technology. And after I graduated from UC Berkeley, I kind of went into this um, kind of minor life crisis mode. I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? You know, I've been in school for 25 years. I don't really know what's the next. And then I had this long conversation with my professor, Professor John Coes, and nothing really, he really couldn't help me to you know, answer what is the meaning of life. But I remember in the conversation, one thing really struck me was that I want to build something that is greater than my earthly body. Uh, I want to make a dent in the universe. I want to solve big problems that really drives humanity forward even. And that's why I started our startup. Our, we started our company because I think this is really the best way to translate the knowledge that we studied, that we invented in college and to really help to drive, um, translate that technology into um, product into a market to, to impact uh, the society. Biological machines really shaping our world because we really heavily relying on biomanufacturing to produce different product. And this product really ranges from extremely cheap material from ethanol, citric acid, amino acid to uh, extremely expensive, low volume, high value product such as antibody or pharmaceutical molecules and other um, pr products such as that. The, currently, there is a gap in the middle um, that can be solved with synthetic biology, but we are unfortunately not there yet. So for example, we would be um, love to use synthetic biology to produce food product, material, uh, food proteins, or other um, symbol-based products. Continuous fermentation is, uh, some people call that as the holy grail in synthetic biology because it solves the two biggest problems in synthetic biology, namely the problem with cost of production and the problem with capacity. Traditionally, 
synthetic biology product is produced with fat batch process, which is slow, repetitive, and serial in nature. So every time you want to produce something, you need to set up a reactor, grow the cells, make the product, extract the product, and repeat this process over and over and over. However, as you can imagine, this is a very iterative and low productivity process. On the other hand, we could carry out continuous fermentation or continuous manufacturing, which is effectively the, the foundation of the conveyor belt of biomanufacturing. Continuous fermentation on, is online 24-7. It always produces product. It results in multifold increase in productivity, drastically reduced capex and apex, and enables the future of biomanufacturing. If you think about continuous fermentation, right, the concept itself is not that novel. It's not like, oh, it's so different um, compared to fat batch, why people haven't thought about that in the past. This is because there are two major technical challenges in continuous fermentation, namely the problem with stream mutation and the problem with microbial contamination. People say it's never going to work because contamination. If you get yeast to copy the same protein over and over and over, because we want to make a ton of whey protein, if you copy those genes, some of the genetic code gets lost or changed, then you go from copying and making a bunch of whey protein to maybe actually making something slightly different. If you want to mass manufacture something, you want to make sure you're making the same thing over and over and over. You want consistency in the product. At PAL, we developed uh, proprietary technologies to precisely address these two problems. We have a biocide and biocide resistant system to address the contamination problem, and we developed proprietary hardware to separate the growth stage and the production stage of a bioreactor, and therefore make our reactor immune to stream mutation. With our technology, we build a generalizable continuous platform technology that can be applied to a diverse range of microbial hosts and product classes. Here's how it works. In the first tank, biomass is continually grown to an optimal density. This provides a constant source of fresh cells to a second production tank. In this tank, the environment is optimized for production Nutrient limitations ensure that nothing can grow, keeping our cells at peak productivity while preventing any contaminants or mutated strains from taking over. A filtration system removes products and recycles cells and media back into the production tank. This reduces the toxicity and keeps the cells healthy and productive. Like an assembly line, fresh cells are continuously put into the second tank as the product is being extracted, keeping the process at an optimal volumetric productivity. Called Sufi internally, um, the, which means self-driving fermenter. Um, the idea of Sufi is that continuous fermentation, instead of just be able to operate it, instead of just solving the technical challenge to be, be able to actually run it, when operated in a suboptimal manner, continues can really underperform fed batch so that an optimization and a constant optimization is required to actually drive continuous fermentation forward so that continuous fermentation always stays at a productive steady state instead of um, varying and actually crashing and burns, which become an unstable process that underperform fed batch. With SOFI that we have, uh, we use AIs to ensure that continuous reactors always operate in a productive state, so almost like a self-driving car, but a self-driving fermenter. With SOFI-enabled continuous fermentation, you can envision that we fundamentally transform the traditional slow fed batch fermentation process to a continuous process, which enables a convertible of biomanufacturing. This based on a independently third party um, um, carried out um, techno-economic analysis. It demonstrates that with our process, we expect to deliver five to tenfold increase in productivity, which translates to nearly 50% reduction in uh, capex and apex. We start our company because we believe the best way for our company and our product to make the largest impact is to build a platform technology so that we can serve the entire synthetic biology community. And as I mentioned earlier, the biggest challenge in synthetic biology is that everything is just so expensive, right? We, these days, we make everything with bacteria. We make bioplastic, we make food, we make high-value enzyme. However, the problem with synthetic biology is that the product itself that's made with synthetic biology 
is often more expensive, it's almost always more expensive than their traditional counterpart. And therefore, they really need some way to drastically reduce their production cost or, and to increase their productivity. And that is really the only way forward for synthetic biology as an industry to, to realize, to really tra transition from biology is the future to biology is now. Biology is possible, biomade product is possible. However, if you look at the bell reactor, uh, reactor side, look at the bell processing side, there's not much innovation since World War II. So there's a major bottleneck when it comes to bell processing, we come to scale up and the process validation. Our technology fundamentally transform, um, change the past fermentation system, which is extremely slow. It takes one week, one tank to generate one data set. For us, we spend one week, one tank to carry out high throughput fermentation because of our ability to um, conduct continuous fermentation. That fundamentally changed the data throughput in the biomanufacturing industry, and that fundamentally changed how much data we can generate and how much, uh, how much quicker we can optimize the fermentation process. Scale up is the journey that starting from a single bacterium to um, cubic meter reactors. So for example, a synthetic biology company would spend years working at a very small scale. This can be microliter, this can be milliliter, can be liter, shake, shake fla liter, shake flasks. And this conditions usually is very, very far away from the actual manufacturing condition just because all the parameters are not controlled, the pH is not controlled, the temperature is not controlled, the cells are usually growing at a very low density, it's not making a lot of product. And then you scale up that process into a bell reactor in which all the fermentation conditions are controlled. The bell mass density is 10 times, 20 times, even 100 times more, than, more denser than the flask environment, and we make 20, 30, 40 more product. And this process, however, can also surface many problems that does not appear in small scale. Just because at small scale, you probably do not see product toxicity. Now we're making so much product, the product itself is toxic to the bacteria, or the, um, the bell mass density itself is not sustainable, it's th which doesn't really appear in small flask scale. So as companies scale up, it is really a, um, a journey they have to go through to valid validate their fermentation process. Fermentation is the core renewable technology that's going to drive the revolution of using biology to make things in our everyday life. In fact, I am indeed telling you that the same technology that makes beer is the same technology that's going to make the food supply of the future, the textile supply of the future, and indeed probably give us the ability to travel in space for long periods of time. So I'm very excited and so are a lot of people about what we can do with biology as a manufacturing platform. In fact, if we look at the different industries for which there's a clear line of sight on how a biomade product might become part of a disruptive force within those industries, you can see that it's broad, it's far reaching and it's over time. So maybe let's get concrete for a second. What are we talking about? We may have heard of the Impossible Burger, an alternative plant-based protein that happens to have a little bit of color and flavor that's a little bit more like the beef. That flavoring comes from fermentation, from that same technology that we use for making beer. If we look at the manufacturing subset of where those products are going to be, we believe there's a minimum of a $500 billion opportunity in biomanufacturing. So the translation of this aspirational set of products into something that you and I could buy at any place, any day, at any restaurant or any normal store that we visit, that comes down to being able to biomanufacture. We think that is a fundamentally impactful and large opportunity in the not too distant future. But there's a problem. There's always a problem. The problem is that none of these ideas that are so aspirational and so cool can scale. The problem is that the costs are too high. So these are things that we can make renewably, but we're not willing to pay, say, $300 for our Impossible Burger. We're willing to pay $3. So we have to make all these renewable products at a price that could actually succeed in the marketplace. And oh, by the way, for manufacturing infrastructure, there just isn't that much. There's about a thousand fold difference between what exists today and what we need to have just to realize our short term goals, what we want to make between now and the next five years. 
And perhaps not surprisingly, or perhaps surprisingly, in an area like fermentation, there just hasn't been a lot of technical innovation. So it's great if we're making wine in the artisanal way or even sauerkraut or kombucha, but it is not good for, 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 uh, for creating an environment for making precision ingredients. There needs to be a much better way. The first companies that can master scale, which is building much more stuff, and master costs are going to be the bioeconomy winners. So there's $30 trillion of market disruption, $4 trillion of market impact, a half a billion dollars of impact in manufacturing alone. And our platform, Pow Bio's platform, is the only way to achieve market relevant costs. We've modeled our technical platform using different types of products like food proteins and specialty chemicals like a hand softening agent, a cosmetic product. And we've modeled it at different scales of production. And in every single case, we have a massive unfair competitive advantage for making things at much better cost and making things scale much faster. And this is all predicated on proprietary technology that we developed uh, using technology out of UC Berkeley and, um, and what we've added to it since we've become a company. How do we do this? So we do something called continuous fermentation. Now all manufacturing is fundamentally continuous, right? You've seen a conveyor belt, you've kind of seen things come together over time. Our platform enables us to do continuous or ongoing manufacturing with microbes, something that was not possible before. That ability to leverage continuous manufacturing gives us a five to 10 X improvement in productivity it's about a 50 to 80% reduction in the cost of goods that we manufacture. It's a 50 plus percent reduction in greenhouse gases, but moreover, it's about a 20% or it's only 20% of the CapEx to build it. This is based on patented and patent pending technology that lets us control for the key barriers to deploying continuous fermentation, contamination and strain mutation. Two nuts we've cracked completely. We're unlocking a $48 billion SOM today. We already have 30 customers. We're tracking to over 2 million in revenue and 80% of our customers come back to us to use our unique platform over and over again. And we work with people who are publicly traded companies and people at very small startups. There's been almost no investment and in innovation on the, on the development and manufacturing side of this equation. There's been $5 billion worth of investment last year on the design side of the synthetic biology equation, you can see the tidal wave is headed our way. There's a huge amount of opportunity to bring a much newer, much more effective and much more fit for purpose technology to manufacturing. Just taking a look at what our customer profiles are worth today, each one of our existing customers goes through a phase of spending a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more as their products mature, such that every product that is made in a biomade uh, workflow is worth about $2 million in revenue to POW. And most, product, most customers have five to 10 products in their portfolio. We have over 30 customers. So we have a straight line of shot to get over hundred million or many hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. We're building at least a hundred million dollar business over the next three years, starting with the rising stars, the startups today and tomorrow's new technologies, the things we're most excited to see. And we're building our fundamental core capabilities and our own scale so that we can then pair with the, the leading edge design foundries and then larger companies who are already using fermentation and ultimately offering the possibility to deploy this in other adjacent marketplaces. Really excited to see over the next few years what are the innovations happen in the bioreactor space because manufacturing is going to be key to getting these technologies to scale. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.